very good evening a very warm welcome to the session so guys today we're going to talk about uh, the parts of speech right grammar session the very first session on grammar so let me introduce you first what the grammar is basically how important is grammar for us when it comes to your uh, cat specifically right and also uh, why should we study grammar or when cat doesn't test us on grammar right so this is what we have for parts of speech today we're going to talk about eight parts of speech we're going to talk about what kind of parts of speech do we have how are the parts of speech defined and then we're going to quickly revise through some examples with some questions how the parts of speech have been defined right uh, just a quick reminder to you did you guys uh, fill in the cat form because the cat date you know for the date for filling in the form has been extended to 23rd of september in case you have filled it guys please do fill it now like because the state uh, because the date has been extended since you all are for cat 2020 i expect that you should have done it by now in case you haven't please do fill in the form right can i see uh heads in case you've done Ajmal, uh, sorry, Amjad, Gini, Monis, Neetu, Priya, Rajat, Priya, Simran, Vandana, Vidur, Yash. Have you all filled in the cat? Yes? Good. All right. Okay, it was just a quick reminder in case you haven't, so you should because uh, we're already uh, running behind. The, the date would be there again. The extension would get expired soon. And post that would not get extended again. We're not getting another extension. Right? So uh, coming back to this, the RC for today, I mean the, the grammar, the parts of speech for today. Uh, first of all, let's talk about why and what exactly is there in the uh, grammar when, when it comes to specifically cat. So uh, cat may, if you talk about any uh, grammar stuff, grammar ke koi direct questions aapko nahi milenge cat mein. But the other exams, they will test you on grammar. So why is grammar important for us even when we talk about cat? it's there for us to connect the complicated and convoluted ideas means uh, whenever in a reading comprehension as you read there are certain words which I call as the connecting words or the contrast changing words the uh, the words that actually are responsible for the contrast in the passage they are basically certain conjunctions for example if I say uh, the sky was filled with clouds yet it did not rain yesterday right yet it did not rain yesterday so yet is a conjunction which is connecting the two sentences. Sky was filled with clouds. It did not rain yesterday. Right? So we have two words, two sentences which are connected with a conjunction. So now, uh, as long as you are aware of the grammar rules, at least the basics of grammar, everything would be fine. If you don't even know uh, the basics of grammar when it comes to exams like CAT, if it, you know, it, which, which doesn't even text, test you directly on grammar, but does text, test you on grammar very subtly, there these rules would play a lot of importance right so one thing is that they connect complicated and convoluted ideas that is they're used specifically for connect connecting the complex sentences for uh, joining in these small sentences and you know getting the complex structures out of them then uh, retains critical information while flushing out the less important ones of course it is there helps you to read things quickly and thoroughly if you know that okay this is working as an adjective okay so this is modifying my noun Okay, this is a word just uh, modifying my action. So that word should definitely be an adverb, right? If you have the basics clear of grammar, things would really help in any competitive exam, be it your uh, CAT or any other exam that even tests you on grammar, right? Post that, just just a check on how many questions come from CAT for grammar. So again, as I said, from 2011 to 13, CAT was consistent with its paper, verbal section, did have some questions, a few questions, which would range from one to three for grammar, but they were basically the questions from RC or parajumbles in other sections, right? But from 2014 onwards, as you see, the pattern has changed. In 2015 itself, you saw the pattern again changed, and we have now 34 questions on verbal section, wherein 24 questions are there for RC itself, and around 10 questions, which are now based completely on theta, right? Theta, we understand. That is type in the answer. They give you a blank, they give you a box where you need to type in the answer. So you have para jumbles for it, right? You have questions based on out of context, right? O -O -O. Then you have summary based questions for theta. So you have 10 uh, subjective questions 
other than 24 questions of RC. So if we talk about CAT specifically, it does not test you on grammar directly, but subtly, yes, everywhere grammar is tested, even in CAT. How does it test you on uh, in grammar as well? Basically, in, in several options you'll find uh, where it says this should definitely should be done, this can be done, this might be done. The author says this can be done, this should be done, this will be done. So there you see uh, certain modals are being tested. So that's a part of grammar itself. So if you have clarity of grammar, it would help you a lot and assist you a lot when it comes to your uh, CAT specifically. Right? Then uh, tests such as SNAP, IFT, NMAT, ZAT, they do ask a good number of questions from English grammar, of course. Right? So if, in case you're planning to write other exams as well, then definitely grammar would play an important role. Right? It would not just be CAT, which is uh, somewhere, you know, you'll be benefited in. Any uh, questions that come directly on grammar, like specifically for exams like SNAP, IFT, NMAT, or ZAT, there you'll find that there are direct questions thrown on grammar. So definitely grammar would be pretty much helpful to you. I hope we are clear on this so far, why grammar is important, why grammar should be used, why grammar should be studied specifically when we talk about even cat. Yes, that's that's very important for us to know, right? Okay, so, uh, so basically when we talk about parts of speech, now let me ask you first, what is a speech? We talk about parts of speech, but first of all, what is a speech? How do you define a speech? When you were in school, the teacher would ask you to be ready with your speech for the morning assemblies, right? When it's your uh, when it's your Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi ji addressing the crowd, it's always the speech, right? Uh, when it is uh, any headmistress or any headmaster coming across a pool of students, they would always address the students with a certain script they have known as the speech, right? So what exactly is speech? When we talk about speech, we are referring to nothing other than some sentences which have been clubbed together. Right? For example, if I say, for example, if there is a sentence, Henry loves his little sister. Guys, forgive me for this uh, in writing. It's, it's something a bit messy here, I see. But somehow I'll try to make myself clear, clear enough so that you understand. So the word says, uh, Henry loves his little sister. That's how my sentence is, right? I will call it my speech. I will refer to the sentence as my speech because, because this is what the sentence makes a complete sense of. When I, when I talk about the sentence, I say, Henry loves his little sister, right? So I would call this entire sentence as one speech, right? It is it is entire sentence which can be bifurcated, which can be divided under various sections, right? For example, the very first word says Henry. <coughs> so Henry refers to the name of a person, right? It is a name. Loves, this refers to a verb. His is basically a word I'm using in place of a noun. It's, it's replacing noun, so I'll call it a pronoun here, right? Little sister. How's the sister? Little. Little is again another noun. I mean, the sister is again another noun. It's like a boy, a girl, similarly sister, brother. And how is the sister? She's little sister, right? So this is the word which is modifying my noun. So it is none other than an adjective. Did we get this, guys? If I talk about the sentence, Henry loves his little sister, I can divide the entire sentence into various buckets. Henry, okay, it's a noun. It's a name. Loves, okay, I'm referring to some kind of action. Some kind of action is being referred by this word loves. That means it is a verb. His, instead of writing Henry's, I'm writing his little sister. That means I'm using a pronoun here. Little sister, sister is a noun. Definitely little is an adjective, right? Did we get this? So the entire sentence, it was divided, it was bifurcated into various sections, right? These buckets are nothing but the parts of my speech. The entire sentence is the speech. Are we good on this, guys? What is the speech? What are the parts of speech? Please give me a heads up if, it, if this is clear to you. I want all of you to please type in. If you want me to uh, explain some more sentences on this, please do type in. Just to be more eloquent, right? Uh, you can text me, of course. I mean, we cannot talk here, but I would want more of an interactive session rather than just a subtle session, you know, which is 
one sided i wanted two way not one way communication i hope i made myself clear pretty clear yes okay all right so this is what a speech looks like right now for example if i say uh sally kid let's make it straight Sally kicked the ball a sister gave her right Sally kicked the ball sister gave her the sister gave her right now what is Sally here hey what is Sally here Please, please answer. What is Sally here? A noun, right? Similarly, Sally kicked. What is kicked? Kicked kya hoga yahan pe? Kicked will be a verb because we are referring to an action, right? Sally is the noun. It's the name, right? Kicked kya hua? It's an action, so it should be a verb. The ball, the ball. Okay, the is basically nothing but an article. The kya hai yahan pe? Article hoga. Article means something which is being used to refer whether subject is singular, whether subject is plural, or uh, whether subject is generic, whether subject is specific. So I'll talk about articles in another session probably. Let's just discuss article to be uh, not just a filler but something that is modifying or uh, specifying whether it's something general or specific. So kick the ball. Ball is what? It is referring to a thing, so it should be a noun, right? Her sister. What is her? It's a pronoun. right sister is another noun here gave is another action here so it should be verb and her means another pronoun did we get this guys sally kicked the ball her sister gave her right sally is noun kicked is an action so it's a verb kicked the ball her sister gave her right so that's how the sentence construction is you just need to check what role does every word in the sentence play right so we have the entire sentence which has been divided into various sections right and we check what role does each section play did we get this yes okay let's let's talk about the uh, parts of speech in brief first and then we'll expand about what exactly they are so eight parts of speech are there right we all know we've been studying them since our childhood days if you remember when a teacher would ask you what is a noun what is a noun you would say it's nothing but name place animal thing you remember we used to play this game when we were kids name place animal thing hota tha game khelte the right so that is how you can even define noun right noun ko agar aap dekho to specifically isi tarah se categorize karte ho it can be refer to any name it can refer to the place again the name of place animal anything in general any animal in general or anything in general as i said that is one way of defining it but 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 when we talk about noun in terms of uh, technicalities we would call nouns as anything which can be used for naming anything in the world which can be used for naming so i would call nouns as nothing but the naming words right nouns are nothing but the naming words nouns ko kisne use karte hain name dene name karne ke liye right whenever you are trying to name something you use noun so nouns are nothing but the naming words similarly if we talk about pronouns what are pronouns pronouns are nothing but for example here i said henry loves sally right this is my sentence henry loves sally so henry is a noun right it's a name loves is another action as we talked about sally is another noun right so henry is a noun sally is a noun again if i want to say henry brought a uh, henry bought a uh, red rose for sally so i'm repeating that word again and again henry 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 that makes a sentence very monotonous a uh, structured sentence monotonously monotonously structured sentence so i would simply uh, i would simply replace the same noun which is being repeated by a pronoun so that the sentence sounds a bit more less monotonous and a bit more you know grammatically correct as compared to the other way so i can use it rather saying instead of saying henry loves sally i can say henry loves her can i say that 
Henry loves her. So her is the word I'm using in place of this noun, Sally. That means Henry is the pronoun. Right? Henry is the pronoun. Henry loves Sally. So Henry loves her. Her is a pronoun. Right? So any word which you're using in place of a noun, which plays exactly the same role what a noun would do, but it has been used just to make the sentence more clear. Uh, and of course, to uh, make it less mundane, less boring, less monotonous to hear, we use these words pronouns. Right? What a cat would test you on when it comes to pronouns is specifically uh, when you use words like, you generally say, okay, uh, it's an IT apostrophe S, right? Questions on this. Similarly, who or whom, when to use who, when to use whom, when to use uh, that, when to use which, right? That is where you'll be questioned in case of uh, pronouns for any of the MBA exam, right? If you're writing any of the competitive exams for MBA, pronouns would not be questioned directly. They would be questioned very indirectly mixed with some other grammatical concepts along with uh, specific, uh, you know, specific technicalities of grammar related to pronouns. So that is how they will test you on pronouns. Uh, what pronouns are in general? It's, it's something which is replacing your nouns, right? It's something which is used to make the sentence less mundane and yet give the correct meaning for the sentence. On the other hand, uh, of course, today we're going to discuss pronouns a bit, but uh, in the next session, I'm going to discuss pronouns in, in uh, like at a at stretch with a full fledged fashion because pronouns cannot be covered in just a few minutes. There are certain rules related to pronouns which I would like to discuss. So we'll have a full fledged session on that. For now, let's keep pronouns brief. Let's just talk about pronouns as noun replacers, which are used to replace nouns and still play the same role as the nouns do, right? So that is what pronouns refer to. When we talk about verbs, we just talked about uh, action here. We just talked about, say for example, if I have another sentence, uh, kittens are playing with the swing or say swings right kittens are playing with the swings so kittens is what it is something which is referring to the subject or i would call it a noun here something which is performing an action right something you're using to name right kittens are kittens is referring to nouns right are is thing which is used to assist my entire structure of the sentence, right? R is also referred as a verb, but here it is assisting the entire structure of the sentence. So I would say kittens are playing, right? So R is again, again a part of a verb, but it is not the main verb here. It is something which is assisting, which is helping the entire structure. So kittens are playing. What are they doing? They are playing. So this is the action, right? This is the action. Since this is the action, this is what I refer to as verb here, right? So verbs are basically the words which are used to specify the action. How the action is done, that is something, another, another category. But what action is being done, that is what a verb actually helps us in defining it. Right? So when I say kittens are playing with the swings, playing is the main action I'm talking about. With, of course, is trying to add something. The is another article. Swings is another noun. Right? So I have an action which is being performed by kittens and that action is the verb here, right? So in general, if I say, what are action words? They are basically the words which are used in the sentence. Any sentence in the world is incomplete if it lacks a verb, right? Any sentence which is verb deficient is not a complete sentence. It is grammatically incorrect. Remember that. Did we get this, guys? A sentence should be, should have a verb if in case it's a complete sentence, it's grammatically incorrect, it should have verb with it. Did we get this? If in case, if in case we're clear on this, let me ask you a question. For example, if I say, I am here. Is the sentence correct? Tell me guys, is the sentence correct if I say, I am here? I want all of you to answer. Monis, I couldn't see any reply from you. Uh, Neetu, Priya, they are somehow connected with me. Rajat. Ria, Simran, Vandana, Yash also comments somehow. Where are the rest of us? Vandana, are you with me? Yash, he is there probably. Uh, Simran, Ria, Rajat, Monis, and Amjad. Where are you people? Yes. 
So when I when I talk about the sentence I am here, is the sentence correct? If we talk about the sentence, what is the verb here? Right? Am hoga yaha pe verb? Am is the verb here. Here is basically talking about the place. I is basically a pronoun. Right? What is am here? Am is basically acting as a verb here. But is am an action here? Am action nahi. What is am then? What is am? Am kya hoga fir? If it's not an action, helping verb kya sakte ho? Okay. Helping verb kya hota hai? Helping verb is something that helps the main verb. ठीक है, for example if I say again, kittens are playing, right? Kittens are playing है, तो यहाँ पे जो main action है वो playing है, ठीक है? This is your main verb, this is your main verb. R जो है, वो आपके main action को assist कर रहा है, इसलिए आप इसको helping verb बोलोगे, right? You would refer R as helping verb because it's assisting your main verb, right? But, but if I say I Am here. क्या यहाँ पे मैं कोई action perform कर रही हूँ? Am I performing any action here? Priya, Vandana, you guys told me, you guys said that it's a helping verb. Am I performing any action here? If I say I am, I am here. No. Then what is the verb here? How can am be a helping verb here? Am helping verb कैसे हुआ? Guys, I want you to answer. Shoot in the dark. Give any. Anything that comes in your mind, but I want this interaction, you know, this, this session to be an interactive one rather than just one way communication as I said. Tell me, what is am? It's not a helping verb here. And I don't have any important, any uh, main action which is being performed. No action is being performed in the sentence. It's simply, you are there, I am here. What is am? I know the answer is coming up from many of you, not just one of you, you know it. It's just that you're not giving me the answer. Rajat, what is it? Main verb hoga? But I koi action to kar nahi rehu pe. I'm talking about an action, right? I said verbs are action words. If I say I am conducting a session for you people, for my kids, right? I am conducting a session for my kids, for you people. So I am conducting. That conducting is the main verb. Am is the helping verb, right? Uh, Priya is having her dinner. Priya is eating her dinner. So eating, main verb, is helping verb. But if I say I am here, I'm not performing any action. I am not performing any action. Yet, as we just claim the sentence is absolutely correct. Why? Why? Because, because when we talk about the sentence, I am here. Dhyan se sunna, so please be focused every one of you. Am jo hai yaha pe, koi action nahi dikha raha hai. Lekin ek bohat important cheez dikha raha hai. That is called state of existence. Right? It is portraying very important thing that is state of existence. इसको S O E भी बोल सकते हैं, ठीक है? State of existence मतलब it's showing that something exists, right? If I say you are doing this job perfectly well, so you're doing, you're performing an action. But if I say I am here, you are there. I was there yesterday, right? So the sentences are correct. Sentences are complete because it's portraying the state of existence in the sentence. Did we get this? It's portraying a certain state of existence, right? Did we get this? If yes, if yes, let me expound a bit about what state of existence refers to. Perfect, 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 guys. Rajat, Vandana, kuch to mila tum logo se, kuch to samaj mein hai ki tum samaj mein hai. I'm happy, I'm glad to know that. Let's talk about what state of existence refers to and how do we actually talk about this word, state of existence. Okay, just a quick review. Verbs ki humne baat kari, और वर्ब्स को हमने दो पार्ट्स में डिवाइड कर दिया वन इज एक्शन दिखाएगा ठीक है वन इज दैट वर्ब्स आर यूज टू पोर्ट्रे द एक्शन सेकेंड थिंग वर्ब्स आर आल्सो यूज टू पोर्ट्रे स्टेट ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस राइट एक और चीज दिखाता है वो क्या है स्टेट ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस है दिस इज वॉट वर्ब्स आर यूज टू शो दे आर नॉट जस्ट दशन वर्ड बट ऑल्सो दे पोर्ट्रे योर स्टेट ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस वेन एवर समी आस यू वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ वर्ब इट्स नॉट सिंपली टू portray an action which is being done in the sentence but also sometimes it is used to portray the state of existence in the sentence state of existence of the subject right now what is this state of existence sabse important cheez hai ye sare words if you talk about any word for example if i talk about these words is are right am was it's am not an so it looks like was were has have had all these words if you see is are and was were has have had ye sab 
मेन एक्शन को असिस्ट करने के काम तो आते हैं राइट दे यूज टू असिस्ट द मेन एक्शन बट ऑल ऑफ दीज वर्ड्स दे ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम दिस वन मैजिकल टर्म बी ठीक है और बी का मतलब क्या होता है बी रेफर्स टू टू एग्जिस्ट राइट ऑल दीज वर्ड्स इज आर एम वॉज व Have, and had. All these words they originate from this one magical term, which refers to to exist, right? It refers to to exist, right? Di ka matlab hi kya hua? To exist. And all these terms we have is are, am, was, were, has, have, had. All of these originate from this one magical term. Did we get this? Are we clear on this, guys? So, verbs are not merely an action word, but they also refer to state of existence. Are we clear on this? Verbs ka again, there will be separate session on verbs where we will be discussing about subject verb agreement. Uh, we will be talking about tenses, right? Subject verb agreement and tenses, both of the topics are very very important. We will be having separate sessions on that. Where again we will be talking about subject, what subject is, what verb is, how do they agree, right? Similarly, when the action is being done, what is the state of the action? Whether it's being done today, whether it was done yesterday, whether it will be done tomorrow. So, continuation may have, pochuka hai, past perfect tense hai, present perfect hai, whatever the tense is, it'll be covering in the tense session on uh, in the work section. Right? Uh, post this. Let's come on to. Are we clear on this? I hope you know. If you in case you want to make any notes, do let me know. Like, be copy karna hoga, do let me know, guys. And if you want make if you want if you want us to move ahead, we can move ahead, right? Okay. If you want to copy anything or you you want to note down anything, do do let me know. I'll stop for a while, right? Okay. Post this. Let's talk about we've talked about something that performs an action. Okay. वो nouns हो सकते हैं, pronouns हो सकते हैं. ये दोनों ही action performers होते हैं. ठीक है? ये दोनों ही कौन हैं? जो action performers हैं. ठीक है? Action Performers, right? ये एक्शन परफॉर्म कर रहे हैं जो एक्शन हो रहा है या फिर स्टेट ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस की बात हो रही है दैट इज वेन वी टॉक अबाउट वर्क आफ्टर दिस वी टॉक अबाउट हाउ एन एक्शन वॉज परफॉर्म पोस्ट टॉक अबाउट नाउन्स प्रोनाउंस एंड वर्क वी टॉक अबाउट हाउ एन एक्शन वॉज डन राइट सो एट वर्क आर नथिंग बट द वर्क दैट डिस्क्राइब दैट डिस्क्राइब एन एक्शन ठीक है एडवर्ब्स क्या होंगे एडवर्ब्स का मतलब क्या है एड प्लस वर्क सो दे आर एडिंग समथिंग टू द वर्क दे आर टेलिंग अस हाउ एन एक्शन वाज डन फॉर एग्जांपल इफ वी हैव सेंटेंसेस लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल इफ वी हैव अ सेंटेंस लाइक प्रिया वॉक्स स्लोली राइट प्रिया वॉक्स स्लोली व्हाट इज माय सब्जेक्ट प्रिया subject as in the action performer the doer of an action right what is my noun here priya what is my action what is my action walks right how is the action performed slowly right how is the action performed slowly uh, in general you must have noticed that whenever a word ends in ly it is an adverb so generally people presume that all adverbs say end in ly what i mean by this is that What I mean by this is that जितने भी adverbs होंगे ऐसा लगता है लोगों को कि उन सब के एंड में एल वाई आता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल फ्रीक्वेंटली ओकेजनली रैंडमली रेयरली राइट स्लोली ऑल दीज वर्ड एव एन एल वाई एट दी एंड दैट्स हाउ दिट प्रिज्यूम इट टू राइट बट दिस इज नॉट ट्रू सम एडवर्ब्स दे डू नॉट हैव एन एल वाई स्टिल दे आर एडवर्ब्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई से प्रिया ऑफन विजिट्स मी Right. For example, if I have the sentence, Priya often visits me. Right. So often visits me. How does she visit me? She visits me often. Generally, like she comes every time. It's like every time she comes here, she visits me. Right. Often means more than. So it is a word which is modifying my action. It is talking about how an action is performed. It is talking about uh, how frequently an action is performed. So it's modifying my action. But it is not ending with an ly. It's not ending with an ly. Still, it's an adverb. So remember, ly ending words 
would be adverbs, but all adverbs do not end in NLY. Remember that. Are we good on this, guys? Priya, Monis, Vandana, Rajat is typing. Got it, okay. Uh, Neetu has already typed in. Monis, are you there? I see you, you're online, but I don't see any text from you. State of being is same, yeah. State of being is same. State of being alagota. State of being is different, Monis. I hope that is clear to you now. Yes? Okay. Okay. Now now let's talk about let's talk about another sentence I'm giving you. Tell me, is the sentence correct? Henry runs very fastly. Tell me, what is Henry here? What is runs? What is very? What is fastly? Henry kya hua sentence mein? Henry is a noun. Runs very. Runs kya hua? Verb hua. Very kya hua? What is very? Or fastly? Fastly nahi hota yash? What about fastly? Slowly ka fastly nahi hota kya? Fastly adverb hai priya. Helping verb hai. Very. One says helping verb. Very fastly is adverb. Dekho. 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 Yash is actually right. Fastly jasa word kuch nahi hota hai. Okay, slowly is another word, but fastly is the opposite. It's always and always it's fast, not fastly. Right? Fastly is no word. It is always fast. Right? It's always fast. I'm really fed up of this, uh, this thing, you know, it, it keeps on uh, slipping every time. I'm not able to write well. So, Henry runs very Fast is the correct way. Fastly is no word, right? Fast is the correct way. Fast hoga, fastly kuch nahi hota hai. So very fast, right? Runs is the action. Runs is the action, right? Runs action hoga. Very fast. Fast kya hai? It's another adverb. Fast kya hai? It's a verb. It's an adverb. Kyunki aapka runs ek action hai. Fast isko modify kar raha hai. So kya kaise bhaagta hai? Tez bhaagta hai. So fast is the adverb which is modifying my action and very is another adverb. Guys, very is another adverb which is modifying my action. It's modifying another adverb. Did we get this? Vandana, you were correct. Very fast. Okay, very or fast. Dono adverb over here. One is very is an adverb here. Right? Priya, absolutely. But fast is the word. Fastly is not an adverb. Right? Fastly is no word basically. Yash was absolutely correct, it should be very fast. So I hope it, it makes clear the sentence. What adverbs are, how to be apply the adverbs. I hope that makes it clear. So actions jo honge, unko modify kaun karega? Fastly is wrong here, absolutely abjad. Fastly incorrect hai, it should be fast. Fastly is no word. Slowly hota hai. She walks very slowly, she eats very slowly. But fastly is an incorrect word form. I mean adverb form. Right? Okay, let's, let's talk about the next term now. Let's talk about the words that are used for modifying again adverbs ne kya kiya adverbs ne kisko define kiya hai actions ko right adverbs kisko define kar rahe hai actions ko to adjectives kisko define karenge adjectives define karte hai kisne kaam kiya hai right for example if i say pretty woman pretty woman handsome guy young couple right Cute puppy. Cute puppy. Right? So, pretty woman. How is the woman? Pretty. So, woman is basically the noun here. And this term, pretty, is modifying my word here, noun here. Pretty, if it is a word that women could define the right, so what the word kya ho It's describing, right? So, it's basically a descriptive term. It's referred as an adjective. It's referred as an Adjective. Did we get this? Pretty woman. Woman kya hai? Noun hai. Pretty is a word which is defining the word women, right? So any term that is used to define your nouns or pronouns, those words are referred as adjectives. I hope I made myself clear here. Yes? So adjectives are nothing but describing words. Just like adverbs are used to define the actions, the adjectives are used to define the nouns or pronouns. They tell us how a noun or a pronoun is, right? Anything which is telling us something more about a noun or a pronoun is basically describing it. And because it's describing it, it's an adjective. 
राइट सो दैट्स अनदर पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच व्हाट आर कंजंक्शंस नाउ कंजंक्शंस क्या होंगे हमारे पास एक्शन परफॉर्मर्स हो गए हमारे पास एक्शंस हो गए हमारे पास वो वर्ड्स हो गए जिन्होंने इन एक्शंस को डिफाइन किया नाउंस और प्रोनाउंस को डिफाइन किया अब क्या होगा अब हमें ये वर्ड की बात कर ली कंजंक्शन व्हाट आर कंजंक्शंस बेसिकली नाउ दिस टर्म कंजंक्शन इट कम्स फ्रॉम कॉन प्लस जंक्ट राइट प्लस आई यू एन राइट कॉन प्लस जंक प्लस आई यू एन कॉन मीन्स विद और टुगेदर राइट कॉन रेफर्स टू विद और टुगेदर जंक मीन्स टू ज्वाइन एंड आई यू एन इज बेसिकली दी नाउन सफिक्स आई यू एन इज नथिंग बट दी नाउन सफिक्स राइट नाउन सफिक्स मतलब जब भी आपको कभी भी आई यू एन दिखेगा एनी वेयर यू फाइंड दिस वर्ड आई यू एन एट दी एन ऑलवेज रिमेंबर द वर्ड विल बी अउन प्रिडिक्शन डिक्टेशन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन प्रोनाउंसिएशन और एग्रेशन एनी वेयर यू फाइंड दिस वर्ड आई यू एन एट दी एन द वर्ड वुड बी अउन राइट नाउन होगा तो कहीं पर भी आई यू एन आ रहा है तो नाउन राइट सो वेन आई सेन जंक्शन कॉन कॉन इज अ वर्ड रूट फॉर विद और टूगेदर Right, junk means to join. So the words which are used to join two words, two phrases, two ideas, or two sentences together are referred as conjunctions. Con together, junk to join. So they are basically the sentence joiners. They are connectors. Did we get this? Yes, they are connectors. Absolutely, Gandhi. Not only, but also fanboys who like for and not, but get so. We just talk about them. Right in the session itself, we'll be talking about all these. I'll be explaining the definitions along with these. Right. So these are the conjunctions. Basically, conjunctions. What are they? They're used for connecting the words, uh, connecting the words, phrases, sentences, or any ideas or actions. Right. For example, and, but. If and is written anywhere, then it two similar sounding ideas. Go. I mean, positive, positive, or negative, negative. Go connect it. If it's written anywhere, but written anywhere, for example, we have a sentence. For example, if I say, "Himanshu uh, is a rich man," but a dishonest person. Himanshu is a rich man, but a dishonest person. So when I say rich man, I'm referring to something positive. But a dishonest person. I'm not referring to uh, another positive quality here. I'm referring to something which is negative. Dishonest person. So dishonest is what? Dishonest is a negative term, right? So therefore, I have connected the two sentences. Imanchu is a rich man. Imanchu is a dishonest person with but. So but kya hai yahan pe? Connected hai. It is joining the two parts of a sentence. Imanchu is a rich man. Imanchu is a dishonest person. Okay. On the other hand, had it been uh, Imanchu. Is a rich guy yet yet a humble person? What about this? The answer is a rich guy to be a comma humble uh, rich guy yet a humble person. Now he is rich yet he is humble, right? So again, there is a contradiction. So when we contradiction, we have but whenever it's a same similar kind of pattern. For example, Himanshu and Priya are rich people. So I would say Himanshu is a rich person, Priya is a rich person. Yet, I mean, they are humble people, right? So I'm referring to and as a connector when we have similar kind of tones, when we have some kind of contradiction. For example, Himanshu is a rich guy, yet a humble person, or Himanshu is a rich man but a dishonest person. So वहाँ पे आप हमेशा contradictory conjunctions use करोगे. For example, but, however, although, yet, right? Then we also have Uh, other pairs of conjunction like Rajat said not only but also either or neither nor uh, then you have and both and right uh, similarly as long as as के साथ as आना that is also pair of conjunction similarly if you have something like uh, like for example if we have scarcely when uh, no sooner than right so they are all pairs of conjunctions we'll be talking about these pairs in Uh, in the full fledged fashion, when we have sessions on conjunctions specifically, but now let's just keep it in your prepositions. क्या होते हैं? What are prepositions? As the name suggests, pre plus 
position right pre plus position so pre means before that's what it refers to right position means telling the position of a certain noun right so prepositions are basically the words that tell us the position of a noun with respect to the entire sentence pure sentence ke aspect mein what is the position of a certain noun in the sentence for example if i say uh, the horse galloped on the road the horse galloped on the road right this is my sentence so what do i see the horse galloped where on the road right so on is basically referring to on is basically referring to the the position like right? where it was on the road right so on is the word which is basically referring to the position of the horse where on the road right so it's telling me the position so the words which are used to uh, tell you about the position of a noun with respect to a certain sentence they are referred as prepositions in general are we clear with this so far guys any doubts we have so far preceding a noun yes it can be preceding a noun of course yes okay 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 then uh, last of all we have interjections what are interjections interjections are basically the words that are used to uh, display the emotion of the author in a written format right for example when you watch a movie to wahan pe aapke samne puri video hai right you can hear the sound you can you can pretty much anticipate ki kya position mein wo character hai right but when the author is writing a script when a director writes a script theek hai aur us script pe agar usko emotions dikhane hai to any where if he wants to show some kind of you know exclamation some kind of uh, awe wala situation ya some kind of uh, sadness some kind of joy so for that he would need an interjection the usage of an interjection right when i say the usage of an interjection for example if we say uh, jesus what it comes up i try to make it j and it just flies off anywhere jesus he uh he rose back from the grave or he rose from the grave let's keep it clear right let's let's come it back jesus he rose from, rose from the grave right so what am i referring to here jesus there an explanation he rose from the grave that is he was up from his grave right so there's some kind of uh it's it's a kind of surprise i'm referring to jesus this happened the last this happened right or hurray we won the match right so hurray and then an exclamation we won the match so whenever you are trying to express while writing in a written format whenever you trying to express through a sentence it's always and always an exclamation that helps you define what kind of expression is the author referring to whether it's a surprise whether it's uh, a joy whether it's sadness whatever uh, the context is accordingly you use define certain terms being used along with this punctuation exclamation that is uh, interjection right did we get this guys so these are the eight parts of speech which we have are we clear on this shall we move ahead let's 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 review certain definitions of these terms so that we are quickly able to recall uh, what these terms refer to and how these terms can be used in general for example nouns if we refer to so noun is a word that names something either a person place or thing as i said in general that's how you define it in a sentence noun can play the role of a subject when i say subject what is a subject again as i said uh henry is jumping on the trampoline right um henry is jumping on the trampoline trampoline hota jab a kids you know they jump so henry is jumping who is performing the action here who is performing an action here it's henry right who is performing an action here henry to jo bhi action perform karta hai usko aap subject bolte ho theek hai we'll be revising this term again when we talk about pronouns also in the subject verb agreement but for every session you should know what subject refers to subject is nothing but 
दी इनिशिएटर और डूअर ऑफ एन एक्शन जो भी काम को करेगा उसको हम सब्जेक्ट बोलेंगे जिस पे एक्शन ट्रांसफर होगा कहां पे कूद रहा है वो इज जंपिंग ऑन ट्रैम्पोलिन दैट इज माई ऑब्जेक्ट राइट ऑब्जेक्ट का मतलब वेर दी एक्शन इज रिसीव सो ऑब्जेक्ट इज बेसिकली द रिसीवर ऑफ एन एक्शन सब्जेक्ट इज बेसिकली द डूअर और इनिशिएटर ऑफ एन एक्शन Are we good on this? What is a subject and what is an object? Remember this. I'm going to ask you in my next class. What is a subject? What is an object? So these three questions directly not asked, but you have to know what is subject, what is an, uh, what is what is an object when you are studying grammar, right? These are very basic elements of grammar, right, guys? Shall we move ahead? Okay. So we're talking about nouns. They're words that basically used to uh, that play the role of a subject. डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट दिस इज वॉट आई सेट ऑब्जेक्ट मतलब जिसपे एक्शन रिसीव होगा इन डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट होता है एक और ऑब्जेक्ट यूज हो रहा है सेंटेंस में फॉर एग्जाम्पल हेनरी गेव अ रेड रोज टू सैली तो सैली पे एक्शन परफॉर्म हुआ और रोज दिया तो रोज इज एन इन डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट यू कैन कीप इट फॉर नाउ एज पार्ट योर नॉलेज बट इट्स नॉट वेरी मच रिक्वायर्ड सो दैट इज हाउ इट इज अ पॉजिटिव क्या होता है टॉक अबाउट इट इट्स अ बिट डिफिकल्ट टर्म वंस विद मॉडिफायर्स एंड सम कंपेरेटिव टर्म्स एंड टॉक अबाउट पॉजिटिव So nouns are basically the terms which are used to uh, perform as a uh, perform the role of a subject or perform an, perform the role of an object in a sentence. They are basically the naming words which are used to name in a sentence. For example, again as we said, the boy and girl were holding hands as they crossed the bridge on the way to town. So all the highlighted terms, if you see, the boy and girl. If I don't know if this is my uh, noun or not, I can simply say the X. right so i need to name something something was there and something else was there that was holding hands right so x and y were holding hands so x kya hai kisi cheez ka naam hai y is also a name of a category i refer to them in the sentence as boy and girl so obviously it's like the men and women were holding hands theek hai priya and rahul were holding hands so again i'm referring to one category i'm referring to another category i need to refer to them in particular names so those names are nothing but the nouns so definitely boy and girl yahan pe kya hai mujhe naming terms chahiye so boy and girl are nouns in general we call them as common nouns because we're not referring to any specific name we're referring to any we're referring to some kind of category in general boy girl holding what again you're asking a question holding what hands right so that's again another noun as they crossed what bridge where on the way where on the way to where to town So all these highlighted terms, if you see, these are nouns because they're referring to some kind of names. Good on this, guys. Subject and object complement. Once again, don't get into this. Uh, it's just the definition I've used here. But subject and object complement, complement jo tha, uski zarurat nahi padegi. Subject and object pata hona chahiye. Utna kafi hai. It's just a very basic class. Let's keep it in here. Complement kya hota hai? Wo I'll tell you in advance maybe. But for now, don't get into it because that's that that will create a lot of mess. Right? We're talking about nouns. Let's just stick to what is subject, what is an object. that will do the job for you right so i hope uh, we are able to identify what nouns are basically in a sentence i love watching my cat my what cat theek hai i i kya hai yahan pe what is i here guys what is i here absolutely absolutely always remember guys i and you ye dono terms pronounce hote hain right people generally mistake them Uh, to be nouns, but I and you are pronouns. They're never used as nouns, right? Don't ever uh, replace I and you uh, referring to them as nouns. They're always pronouns. They're always used in place of noun. For example, if I say I, Shweta Sharma is conducting a session, or uh, you, Vandana Nagpal is attending a session. So you, Vandana Nagpal. If I'm using the name, that name is a noun, but you is a pronoun. I is a pronoun, right? Always remember that. So don't ever get confused. People generally get confused just to. Clarify. So I is not a pronoun. It's not a noun here. But love watching what my cat playing with a pink yarn. Yarn is again the noun. What is pink here? What is pink in the sentence? What is pink referring to? It's an adjective. Guys, I would want all of you to answer. Pink would be an adjective. Why? Because it's defining. It's defining what? What kind of yarn is it? Pink. Right? It's defining the color. So anything that is defining your noun or pronoun is an adjective. We just discussed. Right, so pink is the adjective. Yarn is the yarn is the noun. What is playing here? Playing with the pink yarn. What is playing here? Would it be a verb here? So now let's keep it a verb. Uh, later on, we're going to discuss participles as well. There you'll get more clarity about it. 
Okay, it is raining, and then I use this exclamation. This is an interjection, right? It is raining. Everyone, grab your umbrella. What is everyone here? Am I naming anything in everyone? Everyone, all, none, someone, one, everybody, nobody, all of these terms. They have somebody in them, but who is there, we are not sure. We are not sure who somebody is there, right? Who that somebody is. So obviously, these terms are pronounced, they are not nouns, right? So everyone or everybody, these, these terms are easily pronounced. Grab your what? Grab your what? Umbrella. So umbrella is a noun. And, and rain hat. Rain hat. What kind of hat? Rain hat. Rain kya hoga hai Hat is what? What is hat here? Hat is what? A noun. Rain hat. Konsi hat? Rain wali. Okay. So hat kya hua? Noun hua? Rain hua to? Adjective hua. Right? Again. Uh, and watch out for the puddles. Puddles are basically the uh, the khadde hota na. That is what the puddles refer to. Right? Any any pots you have. So uh, it is raining. It is it is raining heavily. Everyone grab your umbrella. Everyone is a pronoun. Umbrella is a noun. Rain hat. Rain becomes your adjective because it's referring to one kind of hat. And watch out for the puddles. Right? Puddles is again noun because it's referring to watch out for what the puddles. Right? So that is how you define the nouns. Then when we refer to pronouns, as I just stated, pronoun is a word that replaces a noun in general. Okay, Jack met Jill in Boston. So we have two things here. Both of them. If I say he first saw her in a Chinese restaurant, right? He first saw her. He is being used for Jack. Jill ke liye her use kiya hai. Both of them are pronouns. Saw her in a Chinese restaurant. What is restaurant here? Restaurant is a noun. Kaisa restaurant hai? Chinese hai. Chinese kya ho gaya? Adjective ho gaya. Right? This becomes an adjective. Descend on New York Central Park. Visitors. This is what? Noun. They swarm across it like locusts. They. They is being used for visitors. What do they do? They swarm across. Uske across kya karte hai? Pure be able to figure out what nouns are now. There will be a full text section. Similarly, when I say verbs, verbs are basically the action words in a sentence that describe what subject is doing. We just discussed actions for describe karing it. Along with nouns, the main part of the sentence, of course, as I told you, in any sentence, if there are verbs, verbs means action or state of the sentence, that sentence flaws grammatically. I mean, it falls grammatically. It is it's it's corrupt. It's it's completely uh, you know, downshift garbage if it doesn't have a verb, if it doesn't have something to support its existence. Right? So agar kisi bhi sentence pe verb nahi hai, ya pe state of existence nahi hai, that sentence is not correct grammatically. Right? So uh, when we talk about verbs, we talk about the actions of course and also we talk about the state of existence. And for example, if we say Maria sings, right? Maria sings. So Maria is the noun and sings is the action, right? Maria is a thing you may use, yes, sing, tell me that. Why are we using, why aren't we using sing? Just a quick verb. Just a subject. Hota hai. Singular verb chahiye. Sing. And plural is always. Aata kar book. Yes, aata hai. Ya, fir yes, aata hai. That. That. Pre. Priya's friends dance. Priya dance, friends dance. Right? So again, Maria sings. Because Maria sing is again a singular term. Mark eats his dinner quickly. Okay. Mark is now eats hai. Eats refers to action. Action matlab. Action done by a singular subject. Is when we each use kiya hai. His dinner quickly. What is quickly here? What role does quickly play here, guys? It's an adverb. How do we define it to be an adverb? The sentence says, uh, Mark is dinner. Kaise khata hai khana? Jaldi. Right? So, this term quickly is modifying. It's describing the action. How is the action done? Quickly. Mark eats his dinner quickly. Kya khata hai? Dinner khata hai. So, dinner is what? Noun. Dinner is noun. Quickly is an adverb. Not an adjective. Because it's describing my 
verb not be noun had it been uh, smart mark eats his dinner quickly so smart kya hota tha smart mark so the word which is defining the mark is an adjective but this, the word which is defining the action is an adverb so quickly is defining the action often is defining the action similarly here it's uh, mark his dinner quickly dinner is my noun quickly is basically referring to the action not the dinner here so it's an adverb here we went to the market sorry we is what priya and her friends went to the market priya and her friends now ho jayega theek hai yahan pe kya refer kar rahe ho that's basically the noun phrase here we are referring to we right we if we all go for a picnic we all me and my kids are going for a picnic right we went for a picnic so we we are all together like plural verb use kar rahe ho a uh, plural form of uh, pronoun use kar rahe ho therefore it's we right went to the market went is the verb went to the market market is the noun you write neatly in your notebook how do you write neatly and what do you do you write and you do noun over what is you here entire pronoun so you is pronoun write neatly neatly kya adverb where position bata raha hai in your notebook where in your notebook right in your is pronoun notebook is noun are we getting it guys so any sentence you come across koi bhi sentence dekhte ho in a newspaper in any article wherever you come across aaj se kya karna hai usko divide karke dekhna hai what role is this word doing what role is the word playing basically right kya kya kaam kar rahe ho that is what we be looking for that will give you an idea what kind of verb is it uh, word is it whether it's a noun whether it's an adjective or an adverb they thought they is a pronoun thought is the action about all the prizes all is what all is the it's a pronoun all the what prizes noun in preposition the adjective competition noun right so we know how to define the verbs now right okay similarly uh, also known as linking verbs ki humne baat kari thi the helping verbs ki right for example we have the sentence i am a student is the sentence correct guys i am a student i am a teacher you are a student yes it would be a correct sentence it makes a complete meaning though there is no action i am a student that's it i am a student but the word am is portraying what it's portraying the state of existence right and state of existence is different from linking verb linking verb is something that links or helps the main action but here it's referring to the to state of existence so this word is not it is it is not a uh, uh, main action here it's it's basically it's telling the state of existence which is completing the sentence so i am a student we are curious performers oh, sorry we are circus performers what kind of performers are we circus performers circus performers are kya hua yahan pe again helping it out like right? helping the main verb we, uh, sorry helping not it's not even helping it's, it's basically the existence the state of existence v is the pronoun r is the state of existence circus performers kaun se performers hai circus performers hai performers yahan pe noun ho jayega circus yahan pe adjective ho jayega guys if we get this circus is adjective here we are the performers performers kya hua noun hua kaun se performers hai circus performers hai circus kya hua yahan pe adjective hua did we get this any confusion so far guys please be quiet hona chahiye it should be be what is it should be be please be quiet so again be is itself a form of verb right please be quiet so again you are urging somebody to be quiet you are requesting somebody to be quiet that's again the action right similarly adverbs we talked about what are adverbs words that modify a verb tell us something about the verb right that can either that can modify another adjective or another adverb for example these are the ways it can be done it can be done like for example how when where how often how much that's how you define an action he ran how fastest he ran daily i ran here i ran or he ran yesterday quickly all these terms which are defining the action how an action is done when is it done how much is it done how often is it done these all all these terms they're referring to 
All these terms are referring to the adverbs. Uh, one thing you asked a question, please is okay. In the previous sentence, let, let's just discuss that as well again. Yeah, but please be quiet. So please is basically what it is. It is acting as a modifier here, right? It's, it's actually acting as a modifier. Modifier we will discuss karenge. Okay. It's, it's basically a request. For example, uh, get out of the classroom. Okay. Come in. So please be quiet. Please is basically a requesting term being used here. Right? Let's just keep certain words aside. What are words I need to request okay? Sometimes they use uh, God bless you. Right? So God bless you may. It's, it can be used, this word, the sentence can be used like God is noun here. Bless is again, you refer to one category. Bless you is the pronoun, right? But again, contextually, the entire sentence would differ, right? So we just talk about these terms which keep on coming in. In general, we know what no eight parts of speech are, right? Talking about adjectives we just discussed, they are used to describe the nouns and pronouns. They can come before noun or after linking words. That's how it is. For example, he dropped the hot plate. So hot is what? That's referring to plate. Plate kya hai pe? Noun hai. Hot is modifying the noun, modifying the plate. So therefore it's an adjective. I have a black cat. The small boy ran down the street. What a beautiful view. Right? So again, beautiful is defining the view. Beautiful is an adjective. How does it define a uh, linking verb? The view is beautiful. So beautiful is an adjective. And this is being used near the linking verb. He seems how tired. The weather became cold. My cat is black. So all these terms, if you see, they are modifying your nouns. And because they are modifying your nouns, they are referred as adjectives. Are we clear on this? We need to cover a bit on nouns as well. So let's move quickly because we covered most of the apex speech. Maybe we have discussed them in brief. Uh, okay, let's just quickly check how these terms are used as here. She swims quickly. What is quickly here, guys? Quickly at all? Swims kya hai action hai? Quickly kya ho jayega? Adverb ho jayega. It's defining the action, right? So quickly is an adverb here. She is an extremely quick swimmer. Extremely quick swimmer. What is a swimmer here? Tell me this question, guys. Answer this question. What is a swimmer here? She is an extremely quick swimmer. Swimmer is a noun. Extremely quick. Quick swimmer. Kaisi swimmer Quick swimmer hai. Quick kya ho gaya? Noun ko modify kar rahe quick. Quick kya hua? Adjective hua. Quick kya hua? Adjective hua. Extremely quick swimmer. What is extremely? L-Y ending hai. Extremely kya ho Extremely would be an adverb here. Absolutely guys. See. This term is the noun, right? Quick swimmer. Jaldi swim karne wala. Swim karne wala. So it's defining my noun. Therefore, this term is an adjective. But extremely quick. Okay, bohat hi jaldi swim karne wala. So extremely quick. Extremely kya ho jayega? Adverb ho jayega. Extremely is an adverb. Quick is an adjective. Swimmer is a noun. She swims extremely quickly. Swims. Swims extremely quickly. Okay, swims kya hua? Action hua? Extremely quickly. Bohat hi jaldi se. Quickly bhi ek adverb hai yaha pe. Or extremely bhi adverb hai. Both the terms are adverbs. Right, none of them are adjectives. Both the terms are adverbs. Are we clear on this guys? Any questions samaj aya? They're a bit tricky ones. But if you understand these, concept clear hai. Right? Rajat, Mansi, Nitu, Amjad, Monsi, Monis, sorry. Uh, right? They are very basic concepts, but they are very important. I have not kept very strong questions, very complex sentences here, because that will make the sentence, you know, understanding very complicated for you. So for now, let's discuss the simplest questions, so that you can even identify the simplest concepts, and even the toughest questions. Right? So that's about this. Conjunctions, kya hote? as we said, they are connecting words. For example, we have, I like cooking and eating. I don't like washing. Washing dishes after them. Right? So for example, this is the sentence. I like cooking and eating. I don't like washing dishes afterwards. These two sentences were which I connected with but. Why did I connect with connect Because here I talked about positive words. Ki baat kari. Cooking is positive. Hai. Eating is positive. Hai. Dish wash is like this. This is negative. Ho gaya. Right? So you are connecting the two connotations together. Contradiction. Hai. Cooking, eating. Hai, I like cooking, I like eating. But I don't like to wash the dishes. So obviously, you have a contradictory term. A contrasting term. That's why I used it. 
but because it is joining the two sentences joining the two ideas it is a conjunction right sophie is clearly exhausted yet she insists on dancing till dawn there should be uh, i think this sentence is a separate sentence guys sophie is clearly exhausted this is one sentence she insists on dancing till dawn this might be another sentence i am connecting the two sentences using yet because yahan pe kya hai she is clearly exhausted still she is dancing still, still she wants to dance till dawn right wo exhausted chuki hai fir bhi usko dance karna acha laga na apne mazaa aaya it's like yet she is exhausted she is all gone i mean her energy is all gone out of her still she is excited to dance right she is insisting on dancing so there's a contradiction right so we are joining the two sentences with terms which are contrasting here but we are joining them we are connecting them therefore they are conjunctions right then we talk about the prepositions okay these are the few conjunctions you should remember in general fan boys hota hai for and nor but or yet so you can remember these with this term fan boys right Fanboys याद रखना और ये सेवन कंजंक्शन है जो आपको याद रहेंगे दे आर सिमिलर टर्म्स दो देर आर फोर काइंड ऑफ कंजंक्शन जिनको हम कंजंक्शन जब डिस्कस करेंगे तब डिस्कसिंग एट लेंथ बट फॉर नाउ जस्ट अ ब्रीफ डिस्कशन दिस इज हाउ दिस स्टूडेंट्स आर टू रीड द टेक्स बुक्स फॉर ईच क्लास अर्निंग अ कॉलेज डिग्री रिक्वायर्स लॉर्ड ऑफ डेडिकेशन एंड इट कॉस्ट ऑफ मनी सिमिलरली वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड बट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट सो स्टडिंग मीन्स मोर देन रीडिंग द टेक्स बुक सो in order to make sure they they understand or you understand what they've read successful students will also think about how to apply what they read so is basically joining the two ideas here so therefore it's a conjunction so fan boys is one term you can remember this seven, uh, these seven conjunctions with right um then coming on to prepositions we just discussed they are used to tell you the position they're telling that the relationship between the noun with respect to the entire sentence for example i should rewrite the introduction of my essay right sam left his jacket in the car did you send that letter to your mother theek hai to ye position bata raha hai in that to that for 10 guests tonight dan ate ate lunch with his boss so all these words which are not joining the sentences rather telling the position of the subject with respect to the entire sentence Sam left his jacket where in the car. Did you send that letter home to your mother? I should rewrite the introduction of what of my essay, right? So of is basically the the position teller here. So it's telling the relation of certain word with respect to the entire sentence. Therefore, it's a preposition, right? Uh, let's just quickly check what word is it. I want to go to what in the United States? Is it an adjective, a preposition, or a noun, guys? I want to go to somewhere. I want to go to this B school. So that university, that B school is something I'm naming, right? Definitely so not. Pretty much evident from the question itself. Noun ka nahi samajh aaya. We simply check. We try to question what, where. Okay, it's referring to a name. Okay, it should be a noun, right? That's how we check it. Uh, on Saturdays, I what? I work from nine to five. So I perform an action. It should be verb. I work. What did she ask you to do? She is what? A pronoun here. right she should be a pronoun what did she ask you to do what did priya ask you to do jab bhi koi pronoun aayega usko noun se replace karke dekh lo samajh aa jayega wo pronoun theek hai uh we we'll talk about these let's quickly move to some description on nouns because that is something which is very very important you can try these questions uh okay guys now now i'm going to discuss with you uh nouns at a stretch what basically nouns are how can we define the categories of nouns and how are nouns used in general jaise countable nouns hote hain uncountable nouns hote hain common nouns hote hain proper nouns hote hain collective nouns hote hain ye nouns kya hai basically naming words hai hame pata hai but how do we use them in general right specific kya hai aur general kya hai all these things we going to discuss in the uh, in in the entire description of nouns here so nouns can majorly be classified under two categories that is common noun and proper noun that's all that's something we all know right nouns honge to common hote hain common ka matlab hai आप किसी जेनरिक चीज को डिफाइन करते हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस अ बॉय इन क्लासरूम विदूज ऑन इज बॉडी राइट दिस अ बॉय इन इन द क्लास रूम विद सम टैपूज सो देर इज अ बॉय एनी बॉय ठीक है एनी कंट्री एनी ब्रिज सिटी बर्थ डे हैपीनेस ऑल दीज टर्म्स विच रेफर टू समथिंग इन जेनरल दे आर कैटेगराइज एज कॉमन नाउस जो आप कॉमनली रेफर करते हो राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्लीज गेट मी अ चेयर For me to sit. Please get me a chair. Right? Please get me a chair. So it could be any chair. 
I'm referring to something in common, in general. That becomes the common noun. On the other hand, if I name something specific, for example, last Monday, London, Africa, Stephen, right? I'm referring to specific names, then it is categorized as something proper. As the name suggests, I'm referring to something proper, obviously it has to deal with something specific. So that has to be one specific person. The Mount Everest, the River Nile, the Ganges. So here we articles to refer to articles and what are the nouns? Ka hota hai? Oh, sorry, proper nouns are referring to We are referring to something in specific. We are referring to some specific name. Right? So that is when you are not uh, referring something in general but to something specific. Are we clear on this category? Common noun and proper noun? We have been doing it since, uh, since our childhood so we all are aware of it. Just a quick recap. What is a concrete noun and what is an abstract noun? Now, guys this is something which is very very important. Concrete ka matlab kya hota hai? Something which you can touch. Something which you can not just name but also touch along with feel. Uh, for example, if I say this pen, this pen is something I can touch, I can feel with my hands, with my fingers. On the other hand, if I say it's my dinner time and I'm feeling hungry, right? The hunger is, uh, the hunger is taking away you know, the, the entire energy out of me. The hunger is making me feel exhausted. The hunger, right? Love, hatred, uh, nobility, honesty, responsibility, all these terms which I can name, I can feel. I can feel hunger, I can feel pain, I can feel love, I can feel hatred, I can feel belligerence, I can feel aggression. All these terms I can name, I can feel, but I cannot touch them. Right? So they are referred as intangible or abstract. This what touch kar sakte wo concrete hota hai. Concrete is a cement hota hai. Right? It's something you can touch. This wall. Right? It's concrete. You can touch it. You can feel it, name it, and also touch it. Therefore it's concrete. But something you cannot touch, you can just name like honesty, policies, uh, any kind of news, any kind of advice, right? All these things which you cannot touch, you can name, you can feel, but you cannot touch, they're referred as abstract nouns, right? So that's how we define the abstract and concrete nouns as. Abstract noun is a noun which refers to ideas, qualities, conditions, things, it should be comma here, things that cannot be seen or touched and things which have no physical reality are referred as abstract nouns. Truth, danger, happiness, time, friendship, humor, all these things guys, you can only name them, you can feel happiness, you can talk about time but you cannot touch your hours, you cannot touch your seconds, right? You can tell truth, you can name that this is the truth but you cannot touch it. On the other hand, coffee, tree, rain, beach, tune, all these things can be touched, therefore they are tangible or concrete nouns. Abstract nouns are also referred as untouchable nouns or which cannot be touched or intangible nouns. Right? So that's another way of defining the nouns on the basis of whether they can be touched or they cannot be touched. Right? Uh, then you have collective nouns, guys. I hope I'm clear so far. Uh, should be abstract. What? Tune. Tune should be abstract. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, did I mention it in the... Okay. Did I mention it in that? Uh, is it? Music, of course, is something you... Both of music got touchy, ho gaya, but it touch not touch actually. Yes, tune should not be there. Tune should be in this. Absolutely. Right? Music is touchy, but yeah, you can hear. But tune you can hear. But but again, you cannot you can feel absolutely, but you cannot touch. Right? Yes, you cannot touch it. It's not something uh, news agar a baat karo, the news we have sakte ho. But news again intangible hota hai, abstract hota hai. Expressions. Again, you cannot touch anybody's expressions. You can name them, but they are not again abstract. They're abstract, right? Okay, uh, post this, we are talking about collective nouns. Guys, collective nouns uh, are very very important because when it comes to subject verb agreement, when we subject verb agreement, ki baat karte hai, to collective nouns are very important role play karte hai because collective nouns are basically referring to a group wherein sometimes they can be used as a group and sometimes they are split in the group, right? For example, if I say a bevy of girls, uh, a murder of crows, a parliament of owls, right? So I'm refer referring to similar kind of objects in a single group, right? Us group ko hum collective noun refer kar rahe. Collective noun ka matlab kya? You're referring to the entire group in a single bag, in a single category, in an array, right? So that is how we refer to collective nouns as. Collective ka matlab hai, you're putting them together in a certain collection, in a certain group, which can be treated singular as per the context of the sentence. Collective nouns hote hai, in general, 
सिंगुलर यूज करते हो सिंगुलरली ट्रीट करते हो बट समाइम्स दे माइट बी स्प्लिट एज वेल विच वील बी डिस्कसिंग इन सब्जेक्ट वर्ड ऑफ दिवेल फॉर नाउ कलेक्टिव नॉम्स रेफर्स टू ग्रुप्स ऑफ पीपल और थिंग्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑडियंस फैमिली गवर्नमेंट रेफर टू थीम ज्यूरी और यू कैन रेफर टू डेवी ऑफ गर्ल्स एज एड पार्लियामेंट ऑफ आउल्स स्कूल ऑफ फिशेस स्कोर ऑफ कीज स्कोर ऑफ पेंसिल्स बंच ऑफ कीज ग्रुप और ग्रुप ऑफ बॉयज यू कैन रेफर टू एनी स्पेसिफिक ग्रुप और यू नो कलेक्शन टूगेदर इज रेफर इज कलेक्टिव नॉम द होल फैमिली वॉज एट द टेबल पर इफ आई से द फैमिली मेम्बर्स वर एट द टेबल पर इफ आई से द होल फैमिली I'm just referring to the family here. It would be singular. Therefore, I'm using was at the table, right? Family is singular. Hey, was will be there. Family is, and members who refer to it will be there. So again, when do we use was? When do we use were? We'll be referring to this in the subject verb agreement class. Okay? This we'll subject verb agreement will discuss there because there you will talk about the subject. Army of soldiers, of course, battalion of soldiers, army of soldiers. Right? That is another way. That is right. So there will be there is an entire collection of collective nouns. You can refer to that even if you uh, refer to this. Uh, I'll refer to you some books where you can refer to. Right in general, also collective nouns you can find them in general. Like even if you Google, you find entire uh, list of the collection of collective nouns. So you can refer to them. In general, collective nouns are referred as singular entities, but depending upon the context, they can also be used in plural format. Just remember this. कैसे होगा plural format पे वो हम subject वगैरह भी मिलने बात करेंगे. Right then. Uh, Another way of defining nouns can be when you refer to countable and uncountable nouns. What are countable nouns? As the name suggests, they can be counted, right? They can be counted. Uncountable बोल रहे हो मतलब उनको count नहीं कर सकते. For example, if I say uh, the number of students in my class, the number of students in my class, I can count that. But if I say the number of hair on my head, can I count them? No. So hair, grains, water. uh oil or if i talk about milk sugar if i refer to gas if i refer to air stars these are all uncountable nouns right so anything which can be counted falls under the countable category if it cannot be counted it falls under uncountable category there is a format of constructing the uh, countable nouns out of uncountable nouns we'll just have a look at that as well yeah so for example uh If I have idea, right? I can also refer to it as ideas. इसको plural बना सकते हो. Boy है, इसको boys कर सकते हो. ठीक है. So these basically can be counted. They can be made singular. I can have one idea, single idea, more than one ideas. So I have. They talk about a boy, a girl in general. We can refer to more than one boy. That can be boys. So these can be counted. On the other hand, if you have something like music, art, love, happiness, advice. Information, news, luggage, furniture, rice, sugar, butter, water, electricity, gas, power, so on. All these things they cannot be counted, right? They cannot be counted. I can say a uh, uh, list of music, right? Then I can say list of songs. Basically, songs of course can be counted. A piece of art, right? Then uh, happiness is again an abstract noun. Also, it's an uncountable noun. A piece of advice, a piece of information, a piece of news. I can refer to luggage, a uh, part of luggage, a piece of luggage. Furniture again can be referred to as a piece of luggage. Then I can say some grains of rice, a, a bowl of sugar, bowl of sugar, a spoon of butter, a glass of water, a cup of coffee, right? A cylinder of gas. Then some uh, watts of power, some watts of electricity. Then some uh, some you know some money can also be referred to as money as a currency right up currencies we use karte but in general currency and money they are referred as non counter uncountable nouns right guys are we getting it how we define the countable and uncountable nouns are we getting it guys these are all general but you should know what is a countable noun what is an uncountable noun how do we convert a countable to uncountable theek hai jitne bhi abstract nouns honge abstract ka matlab news advice something which cannot be touched they are all uncountable nouns right love hatred happiness they cannot be touched and of course they cannot be counted a happiness do happiness no one hunger two hunger no but we can say a strand of hair a strand of hair there is a strand of hair in my coffee so that strand of hair refers to one single quantity one hair in my coffee one strand of hair so i'm converting uncountable noun to a countable format 
right? So that's how you convert uncountable nouns to countable nouns. Uh, let's let's talk about some. This is something you've been knowing in general. Okay, let's 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 talk about some questions. For example, the women who were working. Okay, check out the sentence. Check out the sentence. Check out the sentence. Tell me if they are correct. If not, how would you correct them? The women who were working on the magazine received awards for design, layout, and content development. The women who were working. Yes, it should be women. Women hona chahiye. Plural hona chahiye. Right? Yes. It is referring to were working means plural hai. Yeah, the women should be women. That is W M E N rather than women. Receive the words for design, layout, and content development. This, this sentence would be correct if we replace it with this women. M E N agar ho jayega, to wo correct ho jayega. Our teacher gives us a lot of homeworks. It should be a lot of homework. Homeworks nahi hona chahiye. It should be homework, right? We can put partitions up between the table. We can put partitions up between the table. Is it correct? Ah, homework hona chahiye. That's correct. How would you correct it, Rajat? The last sentence. पार्टीशंस बोला है ना तो दो डिफरेंट टेबल्स के बीच में होना चाहिए राइट सो वी हैव टू टेबल्स उनके बीच में पार्टीशन होगा राइट वी हैव टू टेबल्स इट शुड बी टेबल्स राधर देन टेबल पार्टीशंस है इट शुड बी अप बिटवीन द टू टेबल्स राइट यस सो दैट्स हाउ यू चेक बेसिकली इसमें सब्जेक्ट वर्ब एग्रीमेंट भी चेक हो गया बट दैट्स हाउ यू चेक सो इट शुड बी गिवन इट शुड बी होमवर्क एंड शुड बी टेबल्स हियर राइट डिड वी गेट दिस गाइस There are a few questions in the slides itself. In these slides, may uh, in these slides themselves, you'll find some questions, some basic ones, some tough ones. You can try those questions. Also, you can try reading newspapers now. Editorials, may today, you read it. Okay. Try understanding what role does a certain word play in a certain sentence, right? Whatever the role plays, check that out. Check if if that is what it's referring to. If if this is the noun, if this is the adjective, this is an adverb, right? Whatever it is, whatever role it's playing, try to figure out what what does this word seem to refer to. Okay, who is modifying it? Action is modifying it, or noun is modifying it. Action is actually a noun. It's working. All these things we'll be discussing uh, in the coming up classes. Whenever I'll be discussing verbs, I'll be discussing certain words which look like verbs, but they're not verbs. Like gerunds, okay, and participles, okay, and infinitives, okay. All these terms I'll be discussing so that you get an idea how. Uh, noun looking words or how verb looking words sometimes end up working as nouns or another part of speech for now this much on part of speech is enough book for us to book because in one and a half hour session we we've covered enough we've discussed nouns in at length and also we've discussed part of speech so let's keep it till here in the next session on grammar i'll be discussing about pronouns or with the articles i'll, I'll let you know so that in the next session on saturday i think we have it together on sunday Uh, we're going to discuss our seat self, right? On Saturday, right? So I hope we clear clear with the session. We are uh, we got it right. Everything, every concept we discussed today. Do we have any doubts so far? Yes. Okay. So shall we end here? Make sure you're revising the concept because grammar is not something you can implement it right away. You need to keep revising on the concepts. All right, guys. Uh, let's connect on Saturday now for another session on reading comprehension. Keep practicing reading comprehensions. Whatever doubts you have, we can connect with them. We can connect. Like in the upcoming sessions, and clarify the doubts as well, right? So uh, I'm signing off now. See you soon on Saturday. Take care till then, and keep reading. That is one important, very important thing. Thank you so much for guys for joining in. See you on Saturday now.